get some other food too. Okay? I'll be okay. <laughs> it's just so so much. <clears throat> You're welcome to if you'd like to. Welcome back, Tony. Ask me the same question that I asked before, and that is, would you prefer that this, would you allow it to be reported, um, or would you rather not be reported? Whatever you wish is what we'll respect. Uh, I allow it. Allow it, okay, all right. Your Honor, everyone knows Eli Hart as the victim of this senseless and horrific crime, but Eli was so much more. Eli was an amazing six-year-old boy who always woke up full of energy and laughter. He was kind, made friends easily, loved reading books. Eli had a love for animals that was very special. Eli explored, played outside, fished with his dad. Eli was an innocent, loving six-year-old boy. He did not deserve this. Eli deserved to grow up and have a safe and happy life. We know these things about Eli because he was our little boy, our son, the center of our world. The love and connection he had with his son, that Tori had with his only son, was something I was privileged to see. You could see the love and bond they shared every second they were together. They had this extra spark between them that everyone could see. Now we only have memories, and they are not enough. Time was taken from us, a lifetime of memories to be made gone. The moment, moments I treasured as being a parent myself, Tori will never have those experiences. A lifetime without Eli robbed of us. School milestones that we will never get to see like graduating kindergarten and elementary school all the artwork he would have brought home and put on the fridge, taken. The first day of middle school and high school, prom, graduation, watch him play sports, teach him to drive, stolen from us. Watching Eli grow and become a young man and what he could have been and done in this world. We will never have those memories. No more hugs, no more snuggles. They were ripped from us straight from our souls on May 20th, 2022 at about 11.30 p.m. when an officer knocked on our door and asked to come in, then asking Tori to have a seat. The cries from my husband broke my heart in a million pieces and then listening to the officer tell me what happened broke it into a million more. Watching my husband sob as his brother tried to comfort him watching the officer's hands shake while he tried to write down his number on a small piece of paper was the moment I knew our lives had shifted forever, that nothing would ever be the same, the pain will never go away, this will forever affect our day-to-day -day lives. You can't explain the loss of your only son. You can't explain what that does to you or anyone. Then. Having lost him in such a horrific way, you just can't explain how that changes your life. How the pain is so deep you can't breathe. How nothing in your life looks or feels the same. And no one understands. Your lack of sleep at night, the nightmares of how Eli was murdered. The struggle to go to work every day knowing Eli has no more days. How painful it is that life just keeps moving and doesn't slow down for us to grieve. No one should ever have to feel this kind of pain or experience. 
this kind of trauma. But we have been sentenced to a lifetime of this pain. Confusion, grief, sorrow, and trauma. A lifetime without Eli. The little boy who would laugh and giggle and squeal so hard when he and his dad would play at the park. It's a sound I hope never fades from our memory. The little boy who rescued a panfish that was stuck on shore when he was fishing with his dad. Um, the little boy who rescued the, okay, just a second, I'm sorry. The little boy who rescued a baby panfish who was stuck in the shore when he was fishing with his dad. He was so proud. He came running in to tell me all about it, but couldn't get his words out because he was so excited. He was so proud. The little boy who would tell me not to be scared of bees, that they were nice and we need them. The little boy that loved being on his dad's shoulders. The little boy who when we asked him, who loves you the most, would always reply, you both do. There are no more triple hugs, no more I love you, no more memories to be made, just emptiness. Eli was a happy six-year-old boy, our little boy, that we loved so deeply. testifying over there about how Eli was everything to you, everyone in the courtroom felt your pain. Then I went home that night and, you know, things happened. Picture pops up. It's me and my son. He's about six years old. Missing some teeth. Goofy like Eli. And he meant everything to me too. And as I looked at that picture, I understood better that you're living out the nightmare of every parent. The worst parent. There's a different bet difference between us, though, Tori. Um, I couldn't do what you did. Um, I couldn't, if I lost my son, I couldn't summon this one to do probably anything meaningful again, let alone come into this environment and tell the world the story of how the most important thing in the world is taken from me. Um, I commend you for that. And what I hope is that the strength you showed by coming in here will be the strength that will eventually help you make peace with the fact that you know that it's going to take a while to realize that the overwhelming joy that Eli brought to you in the six years that he was with you outweighs, and it's going to outlast that overwhelming pain that you just described in a grisly place where you live. So I wish you the best of luck in your journey, and I appreciate and respect what you've gone through and the dignity you've shown. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, too.